That's right. This is not a Buck Rogers ray gun. This is actually a Nikon Shuttlepix P400R digital microscope. Uh, this is a high-end digital microscope from Nikon, so of course it has the renowned uh, Nikon optics. Uh, very good optics for, for those of you who have used their microscopes or cameras. You know exactly what we're talking about. A built-in uh, programmable ring light, 20x zoom, and it's very portable uh, and easy to use. And we'll get into the demo in just one second. I just want to show you just uh, really briefly kind of what's, uh, what the camera looks like. We can switch over here to our, to our other camera. Um, this is a this is a digital camera. This captures microscopic images as still images, not video. So this is a still image camera for uh, microscopic images. Uh, it's got an easy to use uh, and flip up view screen. Got a couple of just basic controls, light intensity, zoom, uh, another button that allows you to control which segments of the LED are turned on, and then some buttons just for navigation. Now, they call this the shuttle picks because it can be used standalone, uh, just as you see it here. I've just got a little video cable coming out of it right now so you can watch. Uh, but it also can mount in a stand. I think uh, if we can flip the picture, yeah, we've got the picture up there on the screen, if we can show that. We've got a little stand that this goes with. So this can be mounted in a motorized stand or a, uh, a manual stand. So you can use it as a desktop microscope, or you can take it out and use it just like you see here. Now, we're going to use it just as a portable. In order to do that, I need to put a little spacer standoff thing on the front. Remember, this is a microscope. Microscopes have very, very shallow depth of field. They also have a very short focal distance. So if you're going to try to use a handheld microscope at any kind of zoom factor, you're, you're, it's all going to be almost impossible to do it strictly handheld. So you need a little spacer that actually helps you kind of stand it off from the page. So we're just going to go over here. We'll switch to our actual video view. We're at 1x zoom right now. So you can see uh, I've dropped this down. It's immediately in focus because of the standoff. It's keeping it just the right distance. And if I wanted to take some measurements, you'll notice that I have a little scale up on the screen right now. The shuttle picks comes with a number of different scales that you can use. I'm happy to using a crosshair. You could turn the scale off completely if you don't want to use a scale. And if you look in the lower right corner, I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, it tells you the scale resolution. In this case, it's three millimeters. So each large tick on the scale is three millimeters. A smaller tick is half of that, or 150, I'm sorry, uh, 1.5 millimeters. So I could go ahead and take measurements with this. I also have the option, I, let's say I can take a picture. If I snap that picture, I have the option of storing the scale with the picture or not. Because sometimes for documentation purposes, if you're doing inspection, you might actually want to store the scale superimposed on the picture that's being saved. Now, the thing I really want to show you is something you wouldn't normally do. I'm going to zoom this in, 20x. And this is pretty crazy, because normally you would be nuts to try to do a handheld. I'm going to turn the light intensity up here a little bit, too. You'd be nuts to try to do a handheld 20x zoom with a handheld microscope just because of the focus problems. And I'll show you what I mean. It's difficult even here. So you'll notice I'm trying my best to keep this in focus, but this depth of field is so shallow at 20x that is almost impossible. There's a lot of vibration. So if I wanted to take a picture, this would be really difficult except for an option that the shuttle picks has. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to, in just a second, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. It's going to take 10 pictures in quick succession, and it's going to decide which picture is the best, and that's the one it's going to save. So let me just do this. OK, I'm going to play back. And sure enough, even though I was wobbling all over the place, I was in and out of focus, out of those 10 pictures, there was one worth saving. It saved it. It threw away the other nine. And now I've got my, uh, I've got my picture back. Another thing I want to show you before we go to the software, notice now that I'm at the 20x zoom. In the lower right corner, my scale has changed. Before, at 1x, it was 3 millimeters. Now it's showing me my resolution on my scale is now 150 microns. OK, so after I've taken a picture, uh, that data is stored in an SD card. I can take that SD card, come back, put it in my laptop, and bring it into the ShuttlePix editor. And we're going to take a quick look at the ShuttlePix editor right now using our screen share. 
So it's kind of uh, the ShuttlePix editor is divided into four areas. On the left hand side, I got my basic uh, Windows style <coughs> folder navigation. If I open a folder, then down below, we have uh, thumbnail images of all the images that are in that folder. <coughs> I select the one I want. I'll just go ahead and select one here. And in the center, I've got the image that I want to look at. Underneath that, I've got some navigation tools to allow me to navigate around that image. And then on the right-hand side, I've got information about that image. If I was to take measurements, uh, the measurement information would show up in the middle pane on the right-hand side over here. And of course, I can export uh, any images or I can export data as Excel, um, Excel format uh, for later analysis if I want to do that. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to do, what you're looking at right now in this image, this is a period. This is a period on a laser, uh, on a laser print uh, of a document. And this is the period at the end of a sentence. I'm interested in knowing how big are laser toner particles. This is a laser print, so obviously it's an electrostatic process. You're depositing bits of toner onto the page. So I'm going to zoom into this 500%. And I'm going to use my little navigation tool right here to just pick up one of those little particles. That is a single particle of toner. I can measure this a lot of different ways, but I think the easiest way is just to let's encapsulate it in the radius measurement tool. I'm just going to draw a circle around that and say, OK. I come over here. You can't read it probably, but it tells me that the radius of that circle is 6.8 microns. So the diameter is roughly 14 microns. So that, is a, that particle is 14 microns in diameter. Now, the crazy thing about this is, I to keep this in mind, if we can come back to the main camera here. The crazy thing about this, think about what I just did. That was captured handheld. I zoomed up to 20x. I got a field of view of maybe a millimeter. I'm resolving a, uh, what did I say, a 14 micron particle handheld. That is nuts. If you've ever tried to do that with a, uh, with a handheld portable microscope, you know that that is almost impossible to do. And yet, you can do it with the camera. Now, coming back to our software here real quick, one other thing that we could do, there is a function called 3D view. Um, and uh, Christopher, do, do we actually have an example of an EDF file? OK, let me tell you a little bit about EDF files. I'll leave that on the screen. One of the things you can do with the shuttle picks, if you're using it with a motorized stage, is you can call what's, do what's called EDF, or Extended uh, Depth of Field. And the way that works, and if we can come back to, uh, to, come back to the, let's say, the, main, the gauge camera here. Uh, camera three. There we go. The way, uh, the way EDF works is, let's say you have, a, you have a stage, and it's moving in the z-axis. Because it's a microscope, only one part of an object, let's say my hand is an object, we have the top, we have the bottom. With a microscope uh, imaging, only one portion of this can be in focus at a time. So what EDF does is it moves from the top, it takes a picture, moves, takes a picture, moves, take a, takes a picture. Each of those areas and no other area is in focus. It then comes back, stitches all those uh, images together, and you get an image that is in focus from top to bottom. You now have a 3D image of the entire, uh, of the entire object. And if we go back to our uh, slide there, you can actually see that what we're showing on the slide, you can see on the right-hand side is taking multiple images. It combines those all together to create an image that is in focus from top to bottom. Now that you have a 3D image, you can do all sorts of crazy analysis with it. So that is, uh, that is it in a nutshell. Again, um, this is the Nikon ShuttlePix P400R digital microscope. Thanks to uh, Nikon, uh, Jeffrey Bork, for sending this to us. And if you want more information on it, there is a link below the player page. Thanks a lot.